Hey guys, welcome back to Film Stock. I'm Andy. I'm Chris. And today we're going to be bringing you our Spider-Man ranking of all eight movies. And we're going to be getting into spoilers of all eight movies, including Far From Home and the after credit scene. Correct. So if you watch the video, but when we get to Far From Home, we'll give you guys a warning. You can just skip over that part. But I hope you guys enjoy, and this is not too controversial. So today we're going to be ranking all eight Spider-Man movies from the worst to the best. And we actually share our number eight, number five, and number one. But other than that, let's start it off with the worst Spider-Man movie at number eight. Yeah, number eight, starting this, Amazing Spider-Man 2, this movie's terrible. Garbage. <laughs> it sucks. It's, it's, it's really bad. The only saving grace is that Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone are giving their best and trying, and their relationship is kind of heartfelt. But other than that, awful villains, awful script. Terrible villains. I, I do agree with you about um, Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. Yeah. That final scene, like when she's die when yeah. she dies, um, is a really good scene actually. But other than that, it sucks. It's the Electro Jamie Fox. What <laughs> laughable? I'm actually laughing thinking about him right now. Um, Dandy Han, that's his name, right? <laughs> Horrible. Uh, yeah. Terrible Green Goblin. <laughs> so weird. Then the Rhino shows up at the end for no reason. And they showed that in the trailer, yeah. so I knew the ending yeah. of the movie. The opening scene with his parents, like dumb. It, that movie is just a mess of a movie. Yeah. It's Obviously studio interfering too bad and it didn't go anywhere after that. So now I'm gonna get into my number seven and six and Coming in at number seven is spider-man 3. This movie was a huge disappointment for me I just expected so much more after how great one and two were and it was overloaded with villains from venom to sandman to the new green goblin It was just a mess of a movie emo Peter Parker was so cringy I mean it was just I wasn't a big fan of it and then coming in at number six is gonna be the amazing spider-man now, this movie has some entertaining moments, but the lizard has awful CGI and is not a very compelling villain. But other than that, it's got some heartwarming moments. I mean, I like the scene where he's like raging out. It's kind of like in Footloose when he's angry, but it's all right. Okay, so let me get into mine. Seven for me is The Amazing Spider-Man. For me, like you said, it has some good moments in it. Yeah. Lizard does suck. <laughs> it's the basic Spider-Man origin story again. Yeah. So it's kind of like, just like the same thing as uh, Tobey Maguire's, but worse. And there's just, it's just kind of boring to me. I mean, there's some good moments with him and Gwen Stacy, but also forgettable movie. I don't really remember it that much. Very true. And it's just not as good as the uh, Sam Raimi's. Mm -hmm. So my number six is Spider-Man 3. Like you said, it is not as good as the first two, which led it to, which is disappointing because those two were so amazing. And this movie, though, I do like uh, Harry's Green Goblin. It builds off the first two when he was coming from where Spider-Man killed his dad, even though he didn't. I liked the Sandman. He was okay. He was cool. Venom, <laughs> stupid. And Emo oh, Pino Parker him. was funny, but it was dumb in the yeah. long run of the movie. But it was still an okay ending like the final 15 minutes of it i liked and it wasn't a terrible movie to me but definitely the worst of that trilogy of sam raimi's so we both share our number five pick which is spider-man far from home yep the newest one yeah and also we're going to be getting into spoilers for this movie heavy spoilers so if you haven't seen spoil it, it all skip ahead like three minutes and then you'll be safe yeah so all right so this movie mysterio is the bad guy it is the bad guy it's revealed about halfway through the movie. And I thought he was a cool villain, yes. a tech a tech villain, which yeah, is interesting was. to see with Spider-Man. Yeah. But he kind of fell short to me. He just, I guess he died in the end. Yeah, I mean, We don't know for sure, but he did probably did die. And I just thought his death was so weak Yeah. to his story building up. I thought it was cool how they introduced this whole Civil War thing. Yeah, I liked that a lot. How they had a bunch of callbacks like with Iron Man <laughs> and when Jeff Bridges is just yelling at that Hilarious. guy. Hilarious. That's funny. But um, <clears throat> Mysterio was cool. I liked his suit and stuff. I really liked those. I really, really liked those trippy scenes with yeah, Spider-Man. Yeah, those were awesome. Felt when, like Doctor Strange. When all like mm -hmm. the Spider-Man would like jump the one Spider-Man. Yeah. When Iron Man came out of the grave. It was just cool stuff seeing that. That's the Mysterio stuff I liked. Yeah. I didn't like the stuff when he was just like blah, blah, blahing about his tech and <coughs> the elementals and stuff like that. Yeah. But when it was revealed that he was a villain, great scene. It was a great scene, but I was a little bit underwhelmed because on Twitter and all the early reactions and reviews, they were like, the whole second half of this movie is a massive spoiler and it's shocking and crazy. And unfortunately, I kind of saw it coming. Yeah, I think we both did before like, we saw this movie. Yeah. It was pretty obvious that he was going to be the villain. Mysterio wasn't going to be a good guy the whole movie. That's just not who he is in the comics. Yeah. I, I thought it was cool, though, having a tech in the Spider-Man, and we'll yeah. see where it goes. We will. And then, obviously, 
the yeah, mid credit scene, the first one, phenomenal. Yeah. After credit scene, the yeah. first after credit scene was yeah, damn, it was crazy. It was wild. The whole world knows who Spider Man is now. Peter Parker. They do, and J K Simmons is back. Yeah, as J Jonah Jameson. That was which was my funny. whole theater clapped. It was awesome. I, I really liked that they yeah. did that. He's perfect casting for the role, and I'm glad that it's not the Daily Bugle like. Yeah. Uh, it's like the net thing, the yeah, web thing. It's so like it's, a YouTube thing almost. It's more like 2019 yeah. style. It fits. But the after credit scene revealing that he is Spider-Man, crazy. I, I, have, I don't know where it's going to go from here, but I like what they Shocking. did with that. Yeah, crazy. And then the second after credit scene was fine. I mean, I actually how do you didn't like it. That? I actually hated it. <laughs> I hated that Captain Marvel, they introduced the scrolls and Talos, and I liked him. He was funny, but. I want, I'm happy that he's back in the MCU, but they could have done it in a, such a better way, mm -hmm. like introducing him again, having him and his wife be um, Nick Fury and Maria Hildeholm yeah. just cheapens it and it honestly makes no sense. Yeah. I think I disagree with you a little bit because I really like that the scrolls are now an integral part of the MCU again. Mm -hmm. And the fact that Nick Fury is off in space, it leaves a bunch of questions for the future, like phase four and all that. But at the same time, it's like, so Nick Fury was never there the whole time. And like you said, it kind of cheapens those emotional moments he had with Peter and Happy Hogan. Yeah. So like, maybe on rewatch, you know, we'll catch some things and it might seem different, but yeah. it was just fine. I need to rewatch this and Captain Marvel to see. Yeah, but sure. I, I just feel like, how did he even know, like, about some of the things he was saying, Nick Fury, like about Iron Man and yeah. just the personal stuff? The writing is a little bad there, but I'm fine with the scrolls being back. I just wish they did in a different way, but... yeah. Whatever, number five for both of us, Far From yeah. Home, good movie. Solid Go entry into the MCU. Heck yeah. All right, so now we're going to be getting into our fourth, uh, our top four, and we have the same number one, but um, all these movies are great, I think. Oh yeah, I love them all. I love them all, so good, but starting with my number four is Spider-Man Homecoming, which I think is a great coming-of-age movie. I love that they skipped over the origin story pretty much. You saw Spider-Man in Civil War, and it picks up right after that. Him and Iron Man's relationship in this movie, great. Love to see them together. His friend Ned, hilarious, funniest moment in the MCU in that movie. <laughs> the bad guys are pretty cool. The shocker sucks, but he didn't suck, but he's lame. But I liked how they introduced Donald Glover, which you know who he is if you watch Spider-Verse. Um, I liked how they introduced the Scorpion. He's cool. And of course, the Vulture, which is a top three MCU villain for me. Michael Keaton played him so well. You really felt for him and his background, like the whole scrap stuff. Oh, yeah. And just, he was such a menace to Spider-Man, and he was played really good. And that scene, when he goes to the door, and Michael Keaton opens the door, like, damn. <laughs> Shocking moment. Very. But it's awesome. But Spider-Man Homecoming is a great movie. It's a great movie for Tom Holland to show us that he's a really a great Spider-Man, and I love it. So now my number three is Spider-Man 2, and this was pretty hard for me to do, but... I love this movie. I love Sam Raimi, how he directed it. And it just feels like such a comic book. Seeing more of Peter Parker in the Daily Bugle, doing his college stuff. I'm pretty sure he's in college in that movie. Yeah, he is. Um, I liked him and MJ's relationship, even though it was damaged in this one. Harry's motivation, how he wanted to find who Spider-Man was, added a lot more to it. The Doc Ock villain, great. Um, the train scene, great. Tobey Maguire, his faces, Great. <laughs> All, Tom McGuire is awesome as Spider-Man, and this movie is a, is a entertaining movie. I love it. So now I'm going to get into my top four. And coming in at number four is Spider-Man 2, which might be controversial to some of you, but I it was hard for me. It, it fell short below the top three. I still really love this movie. Seeing Peter Parker in college and all that is great. Doc Ock, one of the best superhero villains of all time, in my opinion. The iconic train scene. It's just a great. It's also a great action movie and a great comic book movie, and I highly enjoy it. And then coming in at number three for me is the original Spider-Man, a movie that could arguably be the reason we have the MCU now, I think. Yeah. It is such a great superhero movie. Green Goblin, that classic villain, Willem Dafoe plays him so perfectly. The relationship between Peter and MJ, you've got Flash in there, you've got so much great stuff. I just love that movie. It's so, so rewatchable. I love uh, the origin story with Uncle Ben. It's done perfectly. With Emotional. Great, yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. Love that line. And I just basically think this is one of the best superhero movies ever. All right, guys. So coming in for my number two is Spider-Man. Like you just talked about, the original. Sam Raimi directs the hell out of this movie. Such a great start to this trilogy. I love how it feels like a comic book, like literally reading a comic book. When Peter gets bit, when he tries out his powers for the first time, 
Green Goblin, amazing villain. So iconic. He, his suit, so cool. I don't know why people hate it. Yeah. Just a great movie. It's not forgettable at all. Entertaining as hell. Like, J. Jonah Jameson, also hilarious. He's just so good. And I just love this movie. Yeah. I love it. So. Something else I forgot to mention when I was talking about it is that final fight scene is so brutal. It is. Yeah. And it really shows that Spider-Man didn't want to make the hard choice and kill his friend's dad. Yeah. But Green Goblin killed himself. Yeah. But it's a great movie. Great movie. Highly enjoy it. So coming in at number two on my list is going to be Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, in my opinion, Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man and Peter Parker that we've seen on the big screen, and this movie reassured that for me. I just loved it so much. He plays the role perfectly. Seeing how he interacted in high school was great. And then the Vulture, one of the best MCU villains for sure. Michael Keaton plays the hell out of the role, and I just love it. Everything about this movie, so rewatchable, and it's not going anywhere. It's going to be my number two for a long time. All right, so coming in at number one for both of us, mm -hmm. the king of the Spider-Man movies is Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Oscar-winning movie, great movie, surprised us both. Came as a complete shock to both of us, and the fact that it's an animated movie is just amazing. <laughs> really, though. Like, I remember when this movie, the trailer came out, I, was, I thought it looked cool, but I was just like, in nowhere, like, was it going to be the best Spider-Man movie for mm -hmm. me? I slept on it for sure. Yeah. And when I, we went into the theater to see it, I was blown away. Yeah, right from the moment it starts, it actually is a comic book that they put on the big screen, and that is crazy. I love the opening, yeah. like with all those little like yes. techno things. Sound effects, too. The score yeah. in this movie, completely slept Fantastic. Down. Also, the soundtrack is great. It is. Yeah. Both of those are so good. I love like the techno stuff mm -hmm. and just like how they mix it all. Yeah. Miles Morales, it's not Peter Parker. There no. is Peter Parker in this movie, two, two of them actually. Yeah. <laughs> but Miles Morales, great Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. The voice work is so good. So good. And then Nick Cage as <laughs> Spider-Man Noir, amazing. Yeah, he's awesome. My favorite character in the movie, Peter B. Parker. Oh, yeah, he's great. Who plays him, Jake Johnson. Yeah, I think so. He's great. He just was like a, that, like, a little bit out of shape Peter Parker, but like mm -hmm. really, you like he was like the modern day Peter Parker, I think. And then Chris Pine playing the blonde Peter Parker, yeah. who died mm -hmm. by Kingpin. Shocking. Amazing yeah. villain. The villains in this movie. The way they set up the background for the villain is crazy. Like with his family, great writing. So good. The villains in this movie, all three of them mm -hmm. are strong. Yeah. Kingpin, the Prowler, mm -hmm. who's his uncle. Yeah. That's the most emotional moment in the movie, I think. It is. Spoilers, sorry. Yeah. But it's, it's so good. And um, Doc Ock, girl Doc Ock, she's yeah. fine. I just, Great reveal. Yeah, it was cool how they revealed that. The the whole, all the villains in this movie really play a big part in this movie. And definitely the best the villains have been used, maybe Homecoming though, of in Spider-Man. Right. And um, I thought that the story, like how all the Spider-Men came together, like Gwen Stacy and everything, yeah. was very, um, it, it worked. It just worked. Spider-Man, gotta give a shout out to John Mulaney. <laughs> yeah. I love that character. Hilarious. He, he was great. And really May funny. was badass. Mm -hmm. Cool. I loved her. And she was the blonde um, yeah. Peter Parker, is right? And overall, like, this story just really worked for me. I didn't think it would, but it was so entertaining. I think this movie's on Netflix now. Yeah, it is. Most of you guys probably haven't seen it, but you definitely need to watch it, because before I saw it, I was like, no way this movie's gonna be good. But the story is just so relatable. It fits with everybody. The ending is great, too. I got chills. I mean, the visuals were fantastic, and the final callback line is just great. Mm, it is. And the after credit scenes... about it right now. After yeah. credit scenes, funny. So funny. I, I just love this movie. If you haven't seen it, you're doing yourself a disfavor. So yeah. definitely watch it. Infinitely rewatchable. I could watch it right now. I might actually do it after we film this video. <laughs> Best Spider-Man movie. For sure. Well, that's our list, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, we're going to be back next week with the Stranger Things 3 review. Yep. So you guys try to catch it up catch up with that, and we'll review it next week. Yep. So till then, you guys have a good one. Yep. And be sure to like this video, comment your thoughts, and your ranking of the Spider-Man movies down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. See you guys.